aquarium rescue unit was on the road a lot. And one of our favorite places was Memphis. And whenever we played Memphis, Sean Lane came out and sat in with us. And he always entertained us with his, his genius and his, uh, his stories. Gosh, he, he would just keep us laughing and laughing and laughing. Because Sean Lane could see the absurdities. Kind of like, you know, Frank Zappa could see through the culture and see everything, all the crazy stuff, and just make fun of it. Well, Sean, Sean was kind of like that, but never had a bad word to say. But he would just look at something and just laugh his ass off, and he knew <laughs> what he thought about it. Um, but he would come out and sit in with us, and we always loved it. And Jimmy Herring and Sean together, was just wonderful. Oh, man. Uh, they could really, really speak to each other. So when I left Aquarium Rescue Unit, it was just a month or two after that that Sean called and said, hey, I'm playing with Jonas, and uh, uh, we're coming through Atlanta. We have Kofi Baker on drums, and we'd love for you to come out and meet everybody and for you to meet Jonas. And I offered to put them up at my place, so they stayed with me. And uh, after that, I, I think during that hangout we ended up listening to uh, Keith Jarrett Keith Jarrett trio with Dijonette mm. and Gary Peacock and we were all just mesmerized by their their communication their openness because they just they would play the head you know and stretch yeah. the head out but yeah. then it, they opened the box and you know were totally free and we wanted to do the same thing so they invited me to Murphy's in Memphis and it's a small little bar the size of uh, you know it's just very tiny and so we set up and we played. I had the time of my life. Jonas taught me a uh, real quick uh, Indian tea high, a rhythm. And I was just so into it, you know, so much freedom there. Mm. And uh, after that, that was that was the beginning of it. And then uh, my friend Shovik Dada, who runs Abstract Logics and is managing um, Shakti, and uh, John McLaughlin's fourth yeah. dimension. He's been with them nearly 20 years, I think. He was putting a house party on in Raleigh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and he was going to webcast. So Jonas and Sean and I showed up and set up in his living room, and he put the speaker, I mean the, uh, the video and the microphone up and webcast it. And that was the beginning, he says, of Abstract Logic's uh, oh, wow. record label and distribution. And, that was the first thing that, that happened in, in that realm, that world. Hmm. So I met I met um, Sean through playing with the Aquarium Rescue Unit, and then Jonas shortly thereafter, he called me. Hmm. And how, that was just fantastic. It, yeah. How, how was the work process with you guys? I mean, how, how did you usually go? You know, when I, I mean, time is the enemy. Let's mm -hmm. say for me, that's one of the best fusion records out there. Like... It, you know the tunes that your interaction what you play as a drummer also i mean it's just like how did you approach usually the music i mean what... yeah uh, a lot of that was developed on the road and and maybe half of it was already ideas that they had for songs or were already a song hmm. um, but the goal was in a live concert the goal was to play a whole set of music the whole evening without playing anything we've ever done before and trying to make up songs on the spot and the formula for that was often similar to a raga where we'd introduce just sound and then uh, scales over a drone and uh, no time just free like uh, like the beginning of an indian rag but yeah. a lot a lot section and then somebody would introduce a pulse or a rhythm and then everybody would just go with the, the next best idea for the next two hours and uh, th if if we could remember the first theme we would repeat it and then we would do something completely different and then if we could remember the, the beginning theme again we would return to it and often after a gig, somebody was like, who wrote that song? You know, who wrote that song? It came across like a song because it was bookended with uh, familiarity. Yeah. You could do anything in the middle. But if you uh, if you end close to where you began, all of a sudden it's a song. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so beautiful how, how you also developed, you know, as a trio, you know, all these records going then to Zen House and that Persona and like, you know, all these different. And when I listen to the bootlegs, like you said, you know, it's just like so much different stuff. And yeah. just the, the chemistry Everybody gave you had. each other. Yeah. I think a big appreciation for space with Sean and Jonas. Jonas had played with McLaughlin, yeah. who played with Miles, you know, who, he was just one degree from from Miles and everything. And he really understood space and uh, setting scenarios up. Uh, he would set up a scenario and stay with it and let us just have all the fun in the world. I remember one time, we were playing somewhere and the equipment wasn't working right in his monitor and he had to leave the stage to go tell the sound man because the monitors were being controlled from the front of the house. So he has to go through the audience and talk to the monitor. And, that. <laughs> and so it was a duet. All of a sudden it was Sean and I. Ooh. And we just got cooking and cooking and we were flying. And I actually kind of had an inward vision, if not a feeling of what it's like to be an eagle flying with another eagle. No, oh, wow. it was just so free. It was incredible. That was a, one of my strong memories of, of reaching a place where you you've never found yourself before. All of a sudden, you're at a height, and you're looking down like, "Wow, everything's so tiny." <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, it was 